Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will be solving end chapter problem 7.7 .7 from Mr. Chapman's book on chapter of induction motors. Okay, we had already learned in the equivalent circuit uh, video that there are two uh, diagrams of the equivalent circuit. In one, the resistance is R2 over S here, the uh, outside resistance. And in other, this resistance has been divided into two parts, RCL and P converted. Uh, for PAG, it is better that we use this, that is air gap power. So we'll use this one. Now let me briefly explain what is air gap. I had already explained it in one of the previous videos. This is the stator circuit and if you see in the power diagram, the power input, power input, then we have the stator copper loss, a stator copper loss here and then we have core loss. So core of the stator will also have some loss and after that and between stator and the rotor there is slight gap that gap is called the air gap so power in that gap is called the air gap power so with this much we'll uh, now proceed now air gap power has two formulas one is if you take the input side then input minus stator copper minus core loss will give the air, uh, air gap power. The other way is to cal calculate from the output side and it will be I2 square, I2 is the current here, multiply by this resistance R2S and since all powers are for the three phase system, this diagram is for single phase or per phase diagram, so we have to multiply this with 3. So we will be using both these formulas to calculate air gap. Now let's come to the question. A 208 volt 2 pole 60 hertz Y connected wound rotor induction motor has a rated horsepower of this. These are the parameters given. Slip is 0 0.05 and we have to find uh, these 8 uh, parameters or the 8 answers. So the first thing we'll do is input all the values that are given, so R1, R2, etc. All the values we have given. Here we have to do some calculation, R2 over S. R2 is given 0.12, S is given 5, 0.05. So this will be 2.4. Similarly, the input voltage, now the voltage here is 208 volt and voltage in questions are always line to line voltage. So this is line to line voltage. So to get the phase voltage we have to divide 208 by under root 3. So this will be 120 volt. Okay, so the first question is to calculate the line current. Now this is the line current or this is the total current. This current is called I2 and this is IM. Now to calculate the line current we have to find this impedance, total impedance. So we are just rewriting this as this and then we take the parallel or uh, the, we calculate the parallel impedance which calling it ZF and I hope you know how to do the parallel, this one in parallel with this whole. So this is our answer. So ZF is 2.2 plus J 0.745. And now we can easily calculate the current which is IA, the, the armature current and which is also the line current. So both are same. So the line current or the armature current is the voltage divided by total impedance. This divided by total impedance will give this current and I hope uh, you know how to do the uh, this type of calculation with your calculator in complex mode. If not, I'll give you a link, you can follow that.
The next is the stator copper loss. Now this is stator copper uh, uh, resistance R1. So we'll calculate this. We know the current. We know this resistance and therefore we can easily calculate the stator copper loss. And again, remember that everything is, we have to multiply by three uh, of the single phase. So the stator copper loss will be three times the current multiplied by this resistance, current square multiplied by the resistance. And plugging in the values, IA we have calculated, R1 is given, so this is the stator copper loss. The next is the air gap power, and air gap power can be, uh, in this diagram can be shown to be somewhere here. So we'll calculate the uh, air gap power, but this current is I2, and we don't know what is I2. And therefore, we'll use the combined diagram that we had. So this was the combined diagram. And here's a small comment. First of all, if we knew I2, this I2, then we could have used this formula I2 square R2 over S. But we don't know I2, and therefore, we'll use this circuit. And the comment here is that since this resistance and the parallel resistance or the parallel impedance uh, have the same resistance, only this resistance. Therefore, the power drop in, in the parallel circuit, that is three times I A square RF, will be actually equal to three times I two square R two by S. This we are calling is a Thevenin equivalent circuit and this is the normal circuit. So from here, we can find the air gap three times IA square RF, so three times the current and the RF. Now this was the equivalent circuit, the resistive part is 2.2, so that we'll take as RF. So this is air gap power. The third is power converted from electrical to mechanical power. Now the power, this was up to here we were the air gap, then we have to take into consideration the rotor copper loss to go to the power converted. And we can see from here that power converted is actually P air gap minus P RCL. So P converted is P air gap minus P RCL. We had already calculated P air gap. We can also calculate P RCL as I2 square R2. So subtracting the two, we get this formula. So you can just directly use this formula if you want. So we'll do that. For P converted, P A G, we already know. We'll use this formula and plugging in the values. So this is our P converted. Then is the induced torque, uh, two formulas for induced torque, P converted over omega M and P A G over omega sink. Now this is uh, known to us, so we'll apply this and how P A G we have already converted, although P converted also we have calculated, but omega sink we can calculate from here. This is the formula for N sink, the speed, sink speed. 120 frequency over pole, given is frequency 60, number of poles 2. So from here we can calculate N sync. So this is N sync, 3600 revolutions per minute. And what is omega is actually the angular uh, velocity. And for that we divide this by 60 and multiplied by 2 pi. So this is our omega sync. Now putting in this formula, PAG divided by the omega sink, answer we get is 35.5 Newton meters. Now F is to find load torque. The formula for load torque is P out over omega M. Now P out is this here. So let's see how we can calculate P out. Now, here is an important point. 
if core losses are just given by a number of watts like here the core loss is given 180 watt instead of a circuit element so uh, in our question xm is given but rm is not given so then what we have to do is then we often lump together with the mechanical losses so the core loss will be lumped together with the mechanical loss or it could be subtracted at the point on the diagram where the mechanical losses are located so this means that actually the core loss which was before air gap we have to move it to this point just because it is given in, in watts and now we know p converted so we can find p out by subtracting the losses so the total output power p out is p converted minus p mechanical this is friction loss minus p core and minus p miscellaneous we know the values of all these so we'll just plug in the values p converted p mechanical p core etc so the p out is 20 uh, 12.3 kilowatt now what about the omega m so for omega m we have to find the mechanical speed and mechanical speed is less than the sink speed and is less by 1 minus n so we'll use this formula we know all the values sink value given this we had calculated so this is the mechanical speed and from here we can follow the same technique we find omega m that is this one divided by 60 multiplied by 2 pi radians and p out in the numerator so the torque load is 34.3 newton meter then is the overall mechanical efficiency the overall efficiency is given by p out over p in p out we have already calculated p in we'll use this formula 3 v phi i a cos theta we already know all these so let's see now p n is given and if in this you put the value of vt in terms of phi which is under root 3 phi then v n will be this formula which we are using here i l or i a is given and also this angle which will be used for the theta here and now we plug in the values 3 v per phase was 120 current and cos of this angle and so the efficiency comes to be 84.5 percent and the last is the motor speed in revolutions per minute and radians per second the so speed we have already calculated motor speed this we had calculated to be 3420 in step f and from here omega m following the same technique that we have learned divided by 60 multiplied by 2 pi so 358 radians per second so i hope you have been able to follow this Please let me know through your comments. Thank you.